Hey everyone, and welcome back to another special kind of episode of MedHead. It's a little bit vulnerable, and today we're going to be talking about something a lot of you guys ask me a lot of the times, is how I stay motivated in medical school. Now, I guess the semantics between motivation and driven should be discussed, I guess, because they are technically different. Motivation is more like a kickstart. So when you think of motivation, it's more so the willingness to do something. It's more so the want and the desire to go and do something, be a better you, achieve a goal. Whereas in drive is kind of you're taking efforts and putting it into a plan, a more fully realized idea of how you're gonna go about achieving a goal. So honestly, they're both pretty goal oriented, but a little bit different in that way. And a lot of things I talk about today um, make it a little touchy feely. And that's probably a more of a motivational part of how I stay pushing. But I'm also going to be talking about some other things that are more effectively in planning and organizing that are more for how I stay driven. All right. So the first is basically understanding your why. I grew up in a very probably unideal situation. So I grew up in New Orleans and after Katrina hit, did spend some time homeless, bouncing around from homeless shelter to a random hotel to a hotel in. But Hurricane Katrina really did kind of scatter my family everywhere really wasn't close to any family members or anything like that um, but i think around middle school time my grandma did have a stroke moved in with my family and she stayed with us for a longer time i had the privilege of seeing her all throughout high school and some throughout college and while i was studying for my mcat and i think i might have mentioned this in another video i'm not sure but while i was studying for my mcat in about a week and a half for my mcat um, she passed away and it was just really hard because I was the one who basically took her to the hospital for the last time. So when they admitted her to the ICU, I was the one who basically took her and they ended up keeping her, but that was around December. So she stayed in the hospital for around three and a half months, uh, maybe around four. And throughout that time, I did a lot of worrying while well, staying for the MCAT especially. I would often travel to Houston and fly back to Waco pretty much just to see her for a short few days and visit her um, because at some point she did go under and she was on the ventilator and they didn't know when the last day was gonna be her last. And on the final trip that the goodbye was actually real was around two and a half, two weeks, pretty much before my MCAT. So with that in mind, uh, the MCAT was not a fun time for me. Um, definitely was one of the probably more depressing phases of my life. Uh, and I didn't do as well as I did on my practice exams on the MCAT. And it was really just kind of a defeating moment because I am doing medicine first for me and my patients, but second, my family. With my grandma passing, I was determined that you're going to pull out a good score on the MCAT, you're gonna get into med school and you're gonna make everyone proud, including her. And it was just a rough time. So it was not what I expected. I, at the time, was really self-destructive in my thoughts and just really kind of having a lot of imposter syndrome. But my why for why I push so hard and what I do is partially because I refuse to let my family and my grandma down. Uh, I know she'll be proud of me and that my family will be proud of me no matter what, but what I set out to do is what I'm going to work hard to do. And so that is a big reason of my why. Without making the video too long, that is a big reason I have other whys, obviously, but that is a big thing I think about a lot. Next part is kind of defining your goal. And that is kind of a mix between motivation and drive. If you define your goal and you have it written on paper and let other people know what your goal is it kind of keeps you from quitting out of fear now it's okay to change your mind and have like you know okay my goal is different now because i am passionate about other things now um, but it's never okay to change a goal out of fear. Goal changes should be definitely planned, intentional, and purposeful because changing a goal out of fear is a path to regret. So definitely define your goal and know what you want to do and why you want to do it. My goal is kind of under the wraps for you guys because I want to reveal it later. But my close friends and family all know what I'm working towards, why I push so hard. And if you've been an adamant follower of mine and seen other YouTube videos and follow me on Instagram and all this, and that you can probably put two and two together and figure out why I'm pushing very hard. Another part is making a plan and getting organized. This is really important with staying driven. Know what you're gonna do, how you're gonna do it, and put this on paper too. I have obviously schedules that I make from day to day, like checklists and things like that, 
but that's not what I'm really talking about. I'm talking about your five year, 10 year, maybe even 20 year plan, depending on where you are in life on where you want to be at what point and how you want to get there. Now deadlines is something you can put on it and deadlines can also keep you more driven to get to a certain point at a certain point in time, but it's also okay for it to take a little longer than primarily planned. What's important is how you're getting there. Know how you're gonna get there, the tools, the resources, the steps you need to take, the certifications you need to go through. Any and every kind of feasible idea you know that's gonna remain pretty consistent, make sure you have that plan and organized out in your head. For instance, for what my goal is at the end of medical school, I have an Excel sheet of things that I wanna get done throughout my four years and also what things I need to get done to do that, who I need to contact, what websites I need to visit, things like that. Another thing I like to do is looking at the bigger picture at times when you're doing Aki and it, things just seem so minute and and unimportant, you have to realize that the how you're gonna to get to certain places may not seem so exciting, but it's leading to that bigger picture. Visualize yourself succeeding where you're gonna be. Remember, everything is for a reason. That's actually one of my favorite quotes, really. Whether it's good or bad, things happen for a reason, and you want to make sure that you have some say in that reason, be intentional, even in those little things, and realize that this is all gonna come back together for what you are really pushing for. And kind of going along with the last one, if you are having trouble kind of doing what's in front of you and it seems overwhelming or unimportant, break things into tasks. Um, I, for instance, sometimes don't wanna do Anki. On the normal days where I'm getting geared up to do Anki and I'm just fine, I usually do Anki in 50 minute blocks and that's normal for me. I do 50 minutes of Anki, take a break, 50 minutes of Anki, take a break and then maybe another 50. On days that I just really feel like I cannot do it or I'm just really overwhelmed with how much I have to do, this might sound counterintuitive, but what I do is I tell myself, okay, don't promise yourself you're gonna do 50 minutes. Actually cut it down. Do only 20 minutes. Just do 20 minutes of Anki, focus. You don't have to do anything after that. Just do this 20 minutes of Anki. And it's a really weird concept because you're going to realize that <laughs> After that 20 minutes, you're gonna be like, well, I can't stop now. I just did that 20 minutes. So it's kind of a way of tricking your mind to realize, okay, you got that chunk out of the way and you can get the next 20 minute chunk out of the way. Um, and that can be done with anything other than Aki. Just promise yourself a smaller chunk of time than you originally planned and just get that done. Make no promises that you're gonna do anything after, but if you want to, great. If you don't, don't do it. Well, most of the times you're gonna wanna keep going. That is just one type of way to kind of break things into smaller chunks, but definitely think about segmenting things so that the larger tasks seem more achievable. Another way I kind of stay driven is to stay focused. I don't multitask. Uh, multitasking is useful at times. It just depends on what you're doing, but in the normal school year, it's really hard for me to say I'm going to focus on Aki while I'm also listening to a lecture at the same time. While that might work for some others, it's really not that feasible for me. And I get overwhelmed and burnt trying to do both things at once. And so I say, I'm going to do this at this time, one thing, I'm gonna do this after, at this time, one thing. What I'm doing at the time gets 100% of my focus. I cannot give it 98 or it's not gonna be enough. Uh, that meaning I throw my phone across the room. I actually put in an actual whole other different room. I don't keep it in the room with me. I make sure my messenger on my laptop is completely X'd out. I just identify the distractions that I have and I minimize them. And that's kind of a point in itself. Make sure you are able to identify your distractions. A lot of people know they get distracted and they know they procrastinate, but they never take the time to actively say, okay, this, 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 and this are things that distract me. And it can be little things. It can be like, I don't know, you study by a window like I do. And for some reason, every day, there's like a million people walking their dogs and it's really distracting for you. If you love studying by the window and you are able to find another window that doesn't have dog walking in front of it, try to do that. Um, if you're able to compromise closing the blinds, try to do that. If you never go in the way of actively identifying that that's distracting you, it might be a thing that you know happens, but if you never actively recognize it and do something about it, it's just gonna keep happening. And the last point I have is make sure you're kind to yourself when you do great, reward yourself. We are complex beings, but we still respond to reward and conditioning to train ourselves to basically push and know that at the end there is going to be something positive like a reward or something like that. It's super effective, so take advantage of that. I like to say, if I keep working, I can go 
and play video games for a bit. And if I don't, make sure you don't give yourself that reward because then it kind of loses its purpose. If you give yourself that reward without the work, you're really not gonna be serious about really finishing the tasks you have at hand. So these are the things that keep me driven and motivated to keep pushing. A lot of you guys have asked about what it is and it's really not just one little thing that keeps me really motivated per se. I have a conglomerate of things that I need to push as hard as I do. Motivation by itself does not work. You also need to be driven as nice as motivation is. So with those two things working together, I hope to have a great next three years of medical school and hopefully these things also help you guys out. If you enjoyed this video, do me a big favor and like and comment and tell me which of these things you're gonna try out what things I didn't mention that works for you. Commenting, liking, and subscribing definitely helps my channel out for that YouTube algorithm. But thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you on the very next one.